This is the 2019 Mitsubishi Plug-in Hybrid Outlander. Thank you to Platinum Mitsubishi for hooking this up for me. This is where you plug it in. You've got your standard plug in here, which can either go to 110 or to the 220. It takes about 8 to 10 hours to charge it on the 110 on the typical wall outlet. In the 220 volts, it's about 3 hours. This one is for the DC quick charge. It's about 440 volts DC. And in about 30 minutes, it'll take your battery back up to 80%. Show you the hatch here quick. Vehicle's brand new. Still got the seat and your floor covers. Kind of strange to have cup holders in the back of a vehicle. It's only got, there's no third row in this vehicle. Decent amount of storage. And this is where you store your charging cable. Step inside. Here's the back seat. And I just got the cable there. So I'm 5'11 and I got the driver's seat set into my driver position. As you can see, lots and lots of leg room, literally like five inches. The USB port down there for the rear seat and the 1500 watt AC adapter. Let's jump into the front quick. One cool feature, all four windows are auto up, auto down. And then you got your power folding mirrors, your door locks, and then your adjuster for your side mirrors. You've got your on-screen menu, buttons are on the left side of the steering column. Your hatch release, your gas tank filler cap, and your front hood adjustment. You know, on the steering wheel you got your radio controls and your source on that side and this side is the cruise control get the door closed so on the back of the steering column you can see we got the plus and minus here paddle shifting I don't know if you get a good shot at that or not no not really and what that does is when you're driving down a hill you can regenerate voltage back into your battery extending your range so if you're going down a hill, you can set it. There's five different levels. You set it, and you can go a little further in your battery. Just go ahead and start it up. And no, no noise at all. She's pure electric. So 264 kilometers, that's what I put on this vehicle in a week. 
and they filled it up before I picked it up and as you can see the gas gauge has not moved a bit. Let's quickly go through the on screen. Super all wheel control comes standard in the plug-in hybrid. And that's just your maintenance reminders, your trip odometers. And this shows me I got 62 kilometers I can drive on the battery alone and 683 total combined with the, the battery and the gas engine. The gas engine is a 1.8 liter four cylinder engine. And as you can see, I've never, 260 kilometers, I don't think the battery, the gas engine's turned on for more than five minutes. And yeah, 100% EV driving. And then the scan across here. Decent screen here. You got your apps, your XM settings, the apps you need to connect your phone, which I'm not going to do, and settings you can go through everything from your tuner, voice recognition, your iPod, information, all sorts of settings in this vehicle. You can go through your sound setups, brightness, the system. And over here, you got your USB, your clock, your day night vehicle info. So, this shows your energy monitor. So, on this side, it shows how much power you're using from the battery. And when the gas engine turns on, this shows your instant fuel economy. And when you're on this gauge, instrument cap panel will show you as you're letting off the brakes how much battery you're charging the battery back in, and it just keeps total there. Energy flow will show the direction of the where the power is coming from. It'll either come from the gas engine to charge the battery. The battery will drive the wheels, front wheels or rear wheels, depends on what it needs. And then the power from the braking will charge the battery back up. And this shows you that I've driven zero kilometers, liters per hundred kilometers, and 100% the battery. And then the history doesn't really show too much. I've only had it a week, so there's not a lot of history in here. And time to air conditioning. So if your battery, if you're plugged into your house or your garage or workplace or whatever, you can run the air conditioner and it will not deplete the battery voltage. So you can set that up to turn on at the end of your workday if it's really hot outside and you step into a cold vehicle comfortable and you don't really need to run the air conditioner while you're driving down the highway. And same thing with charging. You can charge your, charge your battery off peak hours and you can set all that up using that. And the charging costs, you can enter your cost per kilowatt per hour, which I did, which is five cents a kilowatt. And total charge for the month so far was two dollars and sixty five cents. So I went 265 kilometers. Cost me roughly, call it three dollars because some of it was charged at work and zero gas, which is really cool. And then you got air conditioner settings so you can set it so it, your dual zone and whatever. And then vehicle settings, just your typical creature comforts. So yeah, standard climate controls, dual zone obviously. And so you scroll down, you got your, you can lock or unlock the a hatch, USB port, heated steering wheel, and your sensor detectors for your blind spots, and then your inverter. Standard cup holders. And the gear shift's a little bit weird. You just push and tap back. And I'm drive. Tap forward to get to reverse. And there's the backup camera. And the parking brake, or the, to put in park, done. And electronic parking brake. And you can adjust the four wheel lock, or you can run in pure electric mode. And heated seats. Seats are comfortable. These, I don't know if that's pure leather. I know it's not real suede, but comfortable. Now this unit comes with the sunroof. And you 
you got your mirror controls under there. Kind of really hard to see it. And I'll get down into here. This charge button. So as you're driving down the highway, the four have a nice flat surface. Your gas, your four-cylinder engine is optimized to run at that speed. So you can charge your battery as you're driving and replenish it. And then the save function. So if you're driving down the highway, you can save your battery until you get into a more urban environment where the stop and go traffic really depletes your fuel economy. Overall, this vehicle is really good and I would recommend it to anybody who does a lot of commuting back and forth and that should be good.